Today we're going to inspect the set screws, the universal joints, and the drive shafts for this ATI Solar Array Tracker system. This is the motor right here, mounted with a control and one transmission at the end of the row. So this motor turns the drive shaft and it goes from row to row and a drive shaft mounts on each side of each row to this transmission. So every single row has a drive shaft and a couple of U-joints and there's some set screws that we have to inspect because some of them have been falling off. But what we're looking at here is the disc motor disconnect switch. You can see there's a red light on now and it's active. And every 15 minutes or so, this turns on and the drive shaft moves for about 20 seconds. So whenever we're gonna put a tool or a wrench or any other kind of equipment to work on this drive shaft, we're gonna to wanna to turn it off. Once it starts rotating, it's got the power of your car basically hooked up. Just look at all those rows. It's, it's able to, this one motor turns about 30 rows, something like that. Anyway, so all you have to do, it's so easy. This is a regular disconnect switch. Just turn that to off. And now the red light's off and this motor's not gonna turn. And we also would probably wanna tell monitoring that we shut this down temporarily for like a few minutes to do some inspections. And then it'll, it'll be slightly out of sync with the other motors on the solar site. So always turn this off before you work on these drive shafts because that drive shaft, if, you're, if your hand is caught in that universal joint or your wrench and it starts turning, there's nothing's gonna stop that. It's got immense amount of torque. Okay, they're quiet and they're very powerful. It's moving this whole section of arrays, about 15 rows. Yeah, there you go. Transmission with this big gear and there's a transmission shaft there and these mount right onto it, almost like your car. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna measure how much of this set screw is sticking out of the U-joint body. So if I just use this and I push this down until it stops, this set screw is about 5.94 millimeters, okay? And then we're also inspecting to see if these U-joints are pushed in far enough and they're mating with this little dust seal so there's no air gap, which this one looks okay. And it also helps if you look over here, the most important part, here's the end of the shaft. This is the end of the, the uh, array. So normally there'd be another U-joint going to another row, but this is the last row. And if you see, you have this transmission shaft, drive shaft, and then there's a gap. There's a, there's a notch right here. That's where that set screw goes into. Look how close to the end of this shaft that notch is. It's pretty close. And some of these set screws didn't get, all, the universal joint wasn't pushed on far enough to, so that the set screw could get into that notch. The set screw was, landing on the edge and not going in any further and then they fall off eventually so back up a little bit so you can get a little wider shot now just for part of our study here we're going to measure the depth of that notch so the set screw if it goes fully into that notch it's going to be about exactly that which is 2.01 millimeters so that notch is 2.01 millimeters deep. All right, so we found two that were practically falling off. And we're gonna get some numbers uh, and figure out how much set screw should be sticking out when, some, when at least some of it is into that set screw notch. I notice there's a big, big gap here. And that shows me this universal joint is supposed to be flush with the dust cover all the way inside here. 
So basically it's sticking out a half an inch. It's, it's, it's barely on the drive shaft. And so the set screw isn't going down into the slot at the end of the drive shaft. So I'm gonna remove this and we're gonna take a look. So step back right over here. But before I do that, okay, I'm zeroing out my micrometer. It's set to millimeters. I'm gonna measure how much set screw is sticking out right here by pushing down. Approximately 6.13. And I know that set screw is not into its slot, but it is kind of snug. And <clears throat> let's see, it's, it's biting down onto the end of the shaft, but when it's sticking out 6.13, it's not in the slot. So basically, yeah, it's tight. They can run that way, but eventually they're gonna loosen up and fall off. Oh boy. That's so stiff. I'm just loosening it. It's almost ready to snap off. Okay. So around 6.1 is what you'll see if it's going down on the end of the shaft. getting loose. Should be able to move the whole thing on. Oh, okay, let me get where you are. See if I can push this. Uh -uh. Didn't move? Uh -uh. I think you might have to unscrew it more. Unscrew it some more? Yeah, because it's popped back okay. when you kick on it. Take the whole thing right out, maybe. And we'll measure that. Okay, this has, this is the set screw that comes with the kit. It has like a little shaft at the end where there's no threads and that's what wants to go down into the notch. So now I'm gonna to try to pull this off. You can see it's moving. There it comes. Uh, okay. All right. If you get a close up, see those marks right there on the shaft, that shiny spot? There it is. That is where the set screw was on the end of the shaft instead of down into that slot. So. That's good to know. Now I'm gonna try to get this all the way on there. And this time. Now, notice how there's no gap here anymore. That half inch is, is all taken up. And when I put this set screw down into the hole, I hope, that it ends up in that notch. Let's see. There it is. Oh, how long is that set screw? In millimeters, hundreds of millimeters. 19.88. Okay. That's pretty long. Is that right? 19.88? Okay, so it's going to be tight, so I'm going to have to hold the long end and turn it. Boy! Oh, man. 
I think these threads are boogered a little bit. Steel threads. And you can see it's in the way. Yeah. Can I go that deep? Could this get too deep? Maybe that's the reason why I have a gap. Let's measure. Let's measure the depth of the hole. See if, oops, see if I'm in the. Okay. Here we go. Okay. 9.91 millimeters. And I'm gonna see if I can feel the notch. Can see, you see the notch. You can see the you notch. See it? The edge of the notch. Yeah, so it's cool got stuff. I have to come out a little bit. Yes. That's good. That's perfect. Oh, okay. So this one is the way it is, I think. That's perfect. So if you see a little bit of gap here, and then you can see the set screw is lined up perfectly with the notch now. All right. So, that's easier to get in. Well, it's still going to be tough. I might have to put some like oil on these threads. It's easier than the first one because it got stuck. Not dry up with the knot. Maybe that's what it was. Now we know the notch is right in the middle. And so once we get this in and snug, we can see what the measurement should be when the screw's right into the notch. You're right though, it must have been... Right at all. Yeah. Okay, it's still going in. But it's way better than before though. Yeah, this is good. The gap is like... Okay, it's touching. I can feel that solid, it seated itself. Now, reset this to zero. And here's what the proper set screw length should be. 4.98. So about five millimeters, give or take. 0.5 millimeters. You'll be in that notch. Perfect growth. So 4.98, that screw is embedded all the way down. Okay. Okay, after analyzing all the measurements from all the set screws, we found that um, if the set screw is seated in this slot all the way down, as it's supposed to be, probably going to protrude above the u-joint about five millimeters so we're going to say if you have a set screw that's protruding five millimeters it's perfectly seated in the notch and we found if it was right on the edge it's probably going to be protruding or sticking out of the u-joint six millimeters and also, we found that if the U-joint is shoved on too far, you can get a six millimeter measurement because the set screw will end up coming down and mounting on the inside part of this notch and missing the notch from being too far on. So, and you can even go farther and your set screw might end up coming down on the top of this key which is even higher where your your set screw might be poking out about nine millimeters uh when it seems like it's too tight to go any farther so there's two ways um we we have to make sure when we mount that u-joint that it's not pushed too far on there and it's not not far enough okay basically so the gap um between the U-joint and the body of the transmission has to be somewhere around two millimeters, a nice little gap, a small gap. We'll take a look. This is a good one. The gap right here is a couple millimeters. It's not pushed all the way in. And um, this one, this set screw is coming out about five millimeters and it's right in the middle of its 
notch on the shaft where it's supposed to be.